right to you. Run to you. Everybody sing it now. Sweet. 
Thank you, Jesus. Come on, worship him. Let him know that you're desperate for him now. If you don't fix me, where else can I go? Nowhere. We depend on you, Lord. We count on you, Lord. Put your hands above your heads and give God some praise. Come on, reach out for your Bible and let's turn to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 2. We will read from verse number 1. Revelation chapter 2. Write the following to the messenger of the congregation in Ephesus. For these are the words of the one who holds the seven stars firmly in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. And all, all that you have done for me, you have worked hard and persevered. I know that you don't tolerate evil. You have tested those who claim to be apostles and proved they are not, for they are impostors. I also know how you have bravely endured trials and persecutions because of my name, yet you have not become discouraged. But I have this against you. You have abandoned the passionate love you had for me at the beginning. Think about how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works of love you did at the first. I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place of influence if you do not repent. Although, to your credit, you despised the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also despise. The one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the Spirit is saying now to all the churches. To the one who overcomes, I will give access to feast on the fruit of the tree of life that is found in the paradise of God. Father, we thank you. We pray that you will bless this word. Bless it greatly into the hearts of your people. Let it be like fire, a flame that is ignited in their hearts and that will cause them, propel them to action, to repent and turn to you. Give us understanding in all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please take your seats in the presence of God. The title of my message today is Your First Love. God is speaking to the church at Ephesus, the first church of the uh, churches of Asia. In Christ's letter to the church at Ephesus, he firstly commends them for their good works in fighting against false doctrines and their proponents, imposters, and false apostles, and false prophets. Literally, it's an introduction of commendation, a very flattering and encouraging pat on the back. But what follows is a sharp contradiction that comes as a stiff chiding in form of a call to repentance. This clarion call from the one who is referred as the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, spells out a severe judgment for those who do not regain in pure contrition or repentance their first love and faith. In his dossier, Jude, the brother 
of John exposes the rot and depravity that had stealth, stealthily crept into the church ranks, urging believers to vigorously defend their faith. And this you find it in the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse number 3, again from the uh, TPT version. Dearly loved friend, I was fully intending to write to you about our amazing salvation we all participate in, but felt the need instead to challenge you to vigorously defend and contend for the beliefs that we cherish. The King James Version it says that, to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto us. For God, through the apostles, has once for all entrusted these truths to his holy believers. Jude, he categorically challenged the latter-day community of believers to tenaciously uphold and defend the truth that was worth fighting for, meaning that the church had dropped the ball. The church had now been diverted or deviated to other things. The church now had had some other things become their preoccupation other than their faith, other than their first love. The church had stealthily and slowly but surely retrogressed into other unworthy and other uh, inconsequential activities that were nothing to do with the kingdom of God. So in the same manner in our times, the present day community of Christ must all again also get back to the first love for Christ and God's work. For many uh, the chalking cares of this life that vie for souls and spaces of men. There's some things that are nothing to do with God's work nothing to do with God's kingdom, that are surreptitiously trying to occupy spaces of your hearts. It is no longer the kingdom of God that you're seeking. Like the scripture says in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But what we are preoccupied with is now the cares of this life, the cares of the world. What are we going to eat? Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs is now become our preoccupation. What are we going to wear if I can make more money? If, if I can uh, get to do this for my family, for my children? I'm not against all of that. But all these things in this life which are passing things and transient things, they have their own place. They should never be the number one. They should never be the first in your life. Today, the Word of God, by the Spirit of God, intends to expose the rot and the corruption that is within the human heart. Man has deviated from God. Other things have become God's small letter G. Other things have become gods. They worship this. They worship that. They worship money. They worship other people have become idols. They worship their wives. They worship their husbands. Other than God and the true and one God. God is now saying, you need to go back to your first love. For this to happen, first steps to the altar of repentance right here should speedily be taken. You should speedily take steps to the altar of repentance. That's the call to action. After God has highlighted your good works, you have defended the uh, the, uh, the work of God and thy patience and how you cannot bear them which are evil 
And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. He then goes on to say in verse 3, you have borne and you have shown patience. And for my name's sake, not any other sake, but for my name's sake, how many things have, have you done for his name's sake? How many things have you given up which were to your advantage in the natural, but you had to push them back for his name's sake? How many things can you count and say, I have lost this and I have uh, uh, skipped to have this. I have pushed back my plate of food for his name's sake. How many things can you count and say, these I have denied my flesh for his name's sake. You have labored and you have not fainted. After all this uh, commendation, he turns the spotlight on their deficient areas in their lives. And he says, but I have some things against you. And these things that I have against you is, number one, you have left your first love. You don't love me as you loved me at the very start. You don't pray like you used pray to pray at the very first time. You don't come to church like you came to church at the very first time. You only now come to church when you have nothing to yourselves to do. God now says, consider your ways. Church now has become secondary. The Bible and its commands and instructions have become number two or number five, whatever it is, on your list of priorities. God and his work are no longer the number one priority in your life. Sleep has become more important. Food for the belly has now become more important to you. You cannot do without food. You cannot pray. You cannot fast like you used to. And some of you, 21 days at the beginning of the year is what is enough for you for the rest of the year. And before I took my missionary trip to the United States, I had some two sittings with the pastors. And I told them, I said, if you are not, if you're a pastor and you cannot fast them at least once or twice in a week, you have no right to stand here. You have no right to stand here. If you're a member of our staff in the church and you do not take at least one day in a week to fast, then Lazima Ujuzulu. I told them that. I make it a habit to fast. They have to ask me in the morning, are you taking breakfast? Because it's almost like I usually don't take breakfast. So they have to ask me today, what is it like? So, you don't do those first works of salvation when you got saved now come into church today, you have to have somebody crack a whip behind your rear end in order for you to come to church. Waking up to pray, waking up to come to the house of God on a Sunday morning, it's a struggle. It's as if well, some demon is sitting on you. May God save the church. Is this the church that really is going to welcome Jesus Christ and see him? coming through the, the clouds? Is this really the church? When I'm talking about the church, I'm not focusing strictly on this gathering here. I'm talking about the universal church of God. 
We are more concerned about sports. We are more concerned about what's happening politically. We are more concerned about what is happening over there than what is happening inside of our hearts, what is happening in the church of God. I would like to see God working more in the church than anywhere else. I want to see God healing the sick here amongst us. I would like to see people coming to the altar to give their lives to the Lord more than anything else. Let's go back. Let's take that journey. Let us take that incredible journey back to our first love, back to our first works of salvation when we prayed without anybody asking us to pray, when we fasted with nobody pushing us to fast, when we, we raised up our hands and worshiped God in the sanctuary of God before, as we did before. Let's go back to our first love for God. Today you have to beg people. You have to bribe people so to speak. To come to church, to serve God, to testify. You have to pay people for them to come and worship God. Their own God. You have to pay them. If you don't pay them, they won't show up. They will go elsewhere where they can pay. It has now become like the highest bidder. If some people that serve in this church can be paid to pay more by another church, regardless of their doctrinal alignment, they will go there. They don't care more about the content of the word that is given. They care more about what they take home. Shame. That's not the people that Jesus Christ is preparing for his return. People that will rule and reign with Christ and sit upon thrones throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity to rule this world. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, some of us here may be nothing today, but it doesn't bother me. What I know is that when the kingdom of God has come, I will rule and reign with him. And to me, that's more important than ruling and reigning now. Yes, you're looking at some people here, which the scripture describes as powers of the world to come. You don't know that. The world does not know that. The things of God have become so common. We walk and mingle and walk amongst you. You don't even know. The scripture says these are the stars that are in his hand in Revelation chapter 1. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall hereafter, the mystery of the seven stars in his hand, which thou sowest in his right hand. See this for a moment. Seven stars in his right hand, upheld in his hand, sustained by his right hand, what are these seven stars that he holds up in his hand? The mystery behind the seven stars in his right hand. And the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. These are not the angels that you have known in Sunday school. Dressed in white with flapping wings. That is not those kind of angels. No wonder Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I the son of man am? And they began to daydream. Some they say this, others they say that, some they say that, others they say that you're Jeremiah. At another group here confused, they say you're just Isaiah. 
And another group confused over there, they say, well, he's John the Baptist who just died the other day. And then some other people over there, they said, you're just a mere prophet. Like the Islam, they call him Isa, just like one of the prophets like Muhammad. And then he says, but what do you say? Do you have a different view of what the crowds are saying? What the people out there, the rank and file are saying? Do you have a different opinion that you can stand for? That you can die for? He says, well, thou art the Christ. Peter stood up and spoke for the rest of them. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah. For flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you. It's not from a college. It's not from a seminary. But my Father in heaven has revealed this personally to you. Do I have men and women here today under the sound of my voice who have had a personal encounter with the Father? Has the Father touched you? Has the Father removed scales from your eyes? Has the Father opened up your hearts? Has the Father given you a revelation? The Father in heaven, what has He done for you? What has He done for you? If He hasn't done anything for you, you will not survive the persecution, the suffering, that is coming, that is hitting the church right here ahead of us. You need to have a very strong conviction that will even, even make you prepared already to have your head cut off for the sake of Christ. See how Dr. Luke's narrative of Jesus' parable of the soul. We must take some steps to the altar of repentance very speedily and very quickly. Every one of you here, if God is squeezing your heart and touching your hearts, you must repent. And you must do this right early. In Luke chapter 8 and verse number 14, the seas that fall into the weeds represent the hearts of those who hear the word of God. They hear the word of God. I hope to God you will hear the word of God. But after uh, they have heard the word of God, but their growth is quickly chalked off by their own anxious cares, the riches of this world, and the fleeting pleasures of this life. This is why they never become mature and fruitful. That's from the uh, uh, TPT version. Moreover, we must also look keenly at Mark's ac account of the same parable to add to our understanding the gravity of the matter at hand. In Mark chapter 4, verse 18, it says, And these are they which are sown among thorns. These are the people that hear the word of God. But... Sadly, they are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. They come to church, they hear the word. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of, of, of other things entering in. In other words, they are innumerable. There are many other things that enter into your hearts, enter into your minds. The lusts of other things entering in chalk the word. That word you received, it's chalked. It is stifled. It is subdued. Push down that word you, you received. Chuck the word and it becometh unfruitful. Brethren, this is not how we first began the journey from earth to glory. 
That's not how we began. That is not how we started. We were on fire for God. Oh, remember those days? Brother Mike, Brother Joe, these young men, when we used to have church at the cultural center and the national theater, they would wake up very early in the morning to go and clean up that place. It was littered with empty bottles of beer and all the vomit of the drunkards. Clean it up. Get it ready for the saints of God to walk in there. And we would hear the word of God with uh, alertness. Not just hear the word of God, but we were ready to testify on that word. We were ready uh, to go and tell somebody out there that uh, the first person we would meet on the way home, we would tell them about the word of God. We wouldn't take a transfer that would take us away from church. And then come Wednesday and Friday night, we would go across the city to Kariako Hall. And the dingy area there of Kariako will make it ready for church. Carry instruments from the pastor's house, from Buruburu, the pastor's house, uh, from, uh, 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 from, uh, from Keleleshwa. We would even start church at 8 o'clock in the morning. By 10 o'clock, we are done. People will go home and have breakfast. Go back to your first love. God is saying, you have left that first love. How many things have you had to pass and say, I will pass? Well, but the, the, the package is like this. Oh, no, I won't take that. Why? Because of some inner conviction. My conscience does not allow me. Or the way I was brought up. But there's a deal here. You can make money. I was speaking to my wife. I said, remember the spirit of Ananias and Sapphira. I said, let that not grab us. I can give you another example. Remember that man called Balaam who capitulated to the enticing offers that were put on the table by this man called Balak. The Bible says he went for money. Initially he had said, I cannot curse whom God has blessed. He said, behold, I see them on the hills. The people shall dwell alone. They shall be separated. Finally, he capitulated to the constant enticements. And he went for money. Jude talks about him, doesn't he? He said, he, uh, Balaam, who went for money. But do you know, everything that we will kill for, sacrifice our salvation for, sacrifice the work of God for, none of those things shall go with us into the grave. Not your car, not your suit, not your house, not the money. The unfortunate thing here, the sad thing is that you're going to leave it behind. And if we're an unwise person, you might even leave your family broke. You might even leave your church broke. You did not plan for your family. You did not plan for your church. Yeah, yeah, family. You left a family behind. But you were never smart enough to know that that family you're leaving behind, they need a church to go to. So you left something for the family and you left another portion for the church that the family you are leaving behind would go to.
Amen. We have seen very powerful people in this world here. There are no more today. Oh, yes. Even in this, our great country. Joe McKinnada was a great man. He's gone. No more. Daniel Torrey teach Arab Moy Nyayo with that kafimbo. No more. Kibaki from Nyeri. Powerful man. He's now relegated to history. The same thing with every one of them. And the same thing with every one of us. I will not always stand here. No. Brother Bishop will not always be here. I will go the way of all men of the earth. You will also go the way of all men of the earth. Some years down the road, we will be gone. And our grandchildren will say, my grandfather. The cars left behind. The cattle left behind. The money left behind. Now we wait for the resurrection to appear before God with none of those things. All of those things will not count when we appear before Christ's judgment seat. None of these things that we are staying away from church, staying away from God's work, staying away from God's house will matter before the Lord. Christ is saying, you, 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 and you, and you, and all of you here, go back to your first love. Go back to your first love. Some of us, we cannot do anything for God's kingdom and, and, unless Bishop pays me. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Go and serve the one that you served on earth. Brethren, this is not how we first began this journey from earth to glory. We were zealously on fire for God. We had time for prayer. We had time for fasting. We would not miss church and all its events for anything. It was maybe somebody's son or somebody's daughter wedding at church. It was a kingdom event that I had to be there. Support that family and support that young man will support that young lady. M most of us, some of you, I don't know what you call yourselves, that team uh, that uh, help with families, Pastor Joe, marriage mentorship team. God bless your dear blessed hearts. Surprisingly, some of them won't even attend the weddings of the people that, are, that, that they have been talking to for six months. All you want is to subject people to some harrowing lessons, bookwork. And then don't appear in their marriages when they are wakifunga ndo apa. Amonekani. Let's clap hands for them. I mean, a whole pastor 
in this church? Are you averse to marriage? Don't you know how powerful, how important marriage is before God? And you're a pastor, you're an elder of this church, won't even attend. We were zealously on fire for God. My brothers and sisters, it should not be the case that if it is a Kikuyu son and daughter marrying, all the Kikuyus band around that family. When it's a Luya or a Lua, it's just the Luas, you find one, two, three, four Kikuyus, you can count them on one hand and still remain with other fingers standing. That's not the kind of a church that God sent me to Kenya 34 years to build. Imambo yao kabila, kwisha kabisa. I'm here for everybody. My wife is there for everybody. On your functions, events, and so forth. And some of you will never appear. Or sababu ni gani? Or niko na watoto. Did we not do all those things? When, listen, our children also were one time young when we were here. And we came with them. And we made our children wear some suits coming to church. Why were we doing that? We were instilling some respect for the things of God. They knew that when it's church, it's different that the same way when they go to school, they just can't go to school in their jeans. And you're not making a difference mentally. You're not making that difference in them to know that Saturday is different than Sunday. Those little girls were dressed up so nicely, like the flower girl, every Sunday. They, they just came to church like a flower girl. Oh, now some of you parents, you have really matured and wisened up. Mume elenika kabisa. You participated in missions wherever they took us. We were going to Busia. All of you, you will go. We will go to Bungoma. All of you will. We will go to Nyeri. All of you, you, you will go. Nobody was paying you. You used your own money. When you got there, you kept yourselves there. Brother Bishop, the world has changed. Our givings, our offerings, our tithings defined our liberality. We never had excuses for God and His church. But now we are diametrically opposed to our first love. There is a sudden dearth, not death, but dearth of passion for Christ. Matthew 24, 12 to 13. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the very end, the same shall be saved. Implying that you are not fully saved until the end comes. You have not arrived until the end comes. You are not yet there until the end comes here and now. So work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Paul also marveled 
at the first retrogression of the Galatian church and spared not kind words saying in Galatians chapter 3 in verse number 1, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect? By the flesh, you began in the spirit. Now you are pursuing the things of the flesh. Now you are consuming your time. Now you are consuming your energy. Now you are exhausting your time, finances, and resources on the things of the flesh. Are you that foolish? I hear the sh that sharp and loud voice sounding like a trumpet. That voice of Jesus Christ calling us back to our first love, demanding commitment. Listen to me. The Lord demands commitment from you. Tell us that for me to your neighbor. The Lord demands commitment from you. On both sides. May God help us with grace to humbly turn back to Him. Yes, go ahead and appreciate. I said, may He grant us grace to turn back to Him, to return back to our first love, to return back to our first works. God says, if you won't praise me, if you won't worship me, He says, uh, the rocks will cry out. He says, the rocks will cry out. You know what that means? That means in your place, a rock will emerge. Look around, left, right, and center. You see a rock there. That person you think is unworthy, that person you think is not significant, they are here to worship God, to qualify. A man of God's call. And they say, we believe in God. We believe in his Christ. And we believe in his servant, the apostle. You are validating my calling and my ministry by your presence, by your prayers, by your support. In conclusion, verse 5 of our text. You remember where our text is? Revelation chapter 2, verse 5 say, think about how far you have fallen. Remember, therefore, this is the call to action, from whence thou art fallen. Think about how far you have fallen. Repent and do the first works. Do the works of love you did at first. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove the candlestick. I start off by saying the candlestick is the stars in his hand. Out of his place. So God will say, I will remo remove your worthy leaders from you, and you will remain with vain leaders, except 
you repent. You see, that angel in your church at Ephesus, God says, I will remove him for his own sake. And then I leave you to yourselves. You can vote any other man, vote in your tribe's man, vote in your cronies. But I will not put them in my hand. So God says, if you're not careful, if you won't repent, if you will not go back to your first works, if you will not go back to your first, he says, I will remove that star from among you. God says, I will remove my servants from among you. And I will give you over to reprobates. A reprobate, that word reprobate, it means vain of understanding. That is a harsh judgment, isn't it? Yes. We are counseled to reflect. We are taken back to the place of repentance. Counseled to reflect and identify where we actually fell from grace and go back to our first works. Failure to which the hand of God will be lifted from amongst us. But we don't have to go that spiral downward way. We have the better option. You and I have the better option. That's not safaricom. A better option to heed and to hear the voice of God, the voice of the bridegroom, Jesus the Christ, affectionately wooing us as his bride to our first love. That is to embrace him as he reaches with his arms around us. Here's, what, here's that sweet voice of the bridegroom from Solomon. The Song of Songs, chapter 2, verses 7 to 13. The King James Version says, I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rows and by the, by the hinds of the field, that you stir not up, nor awake my love, till he please. The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh lipping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. My beloved spake and said unto me, rise up, my love, my fair one. And come away. That's the voice of the bridegroom. Jesus Christ is saying, reaching out to you. Get back to my, to your first love. He says, rise up. Praise me. Rise up. Worship me. Rise up. Be affectionate towards me. Rise up. And love me like I love you. Rise up. And be ready to pay the price like I gave my whole life to you. Rise up and come away from the worldly things. Rise up and come away from the fleshly things. Rise up and come away from those things that occupy your lives and occupy your space. Rise up and come away. This is my beloved, my bride. Rise up. Church, rise up and take your stand. Don't be compromised by the world and its affairs. Rise up. Come away. Come away. Rise up. Turn with me, Turn with me to your neighbor and say, rise up and come away. Say it like a minute, like a minute. Say, rise up. Jesus say, rise up and come away. So saints of God, 
bright members that are here in me here today, that are hearing the voice of the bridegroom. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Matthew 25, it says at midnight, the bridegroom was coming. And there was a voice that was a midnight cry that said, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go ye out to meet him. Rise up. Go ye and meet him. Come away and meet the bridegroom. Away from your choking cares of this life. And away from distracting elements of the world. Away, my brothers. Let's go back to our first love. Let's answer to the call to intimacy with our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let's follow Jesus Christ with our whole hearts, with our everything, with our resources. We give Him time. We, we give Him a special time. Come away and be the bride of Jesus Christ. Come away and be the elect lady of Jesus Christ. Come away and become the wife of Jesus Christ. Come away and become the church of Jesus Christ. Come away and be the people of God in this land. Come away from everything and be separated, saints of God. Lift up your hands and worship Him in the house.